In this tutorial, I will show you how to display your blog posts in BuddyBoss app. BuddyBoss app provides a really engaging blog experience, allowing your members to view all of your blog posts in a beautiful interface. We can leave comments on blog posts using our native comments modal. which provides a really nice experience. Now let's go into the WordPress admin so I can show you how to configure the blog. Here we are in the WordPress admin at Buddy Boss App Branding tab bar. The first thing we're going to want to do is add a menu into our app navigation so that our members can actually access the blog in our app. I can add that menu into the tab bar or into the more screen, whichever I prefer. For this example, I'll add it into the more screen by clicking on here. Note that I have another tutorial explaining in detail how to use the tab bar and more screen, so make sure to watch that video if you're interested. On the left side, we can see this core app menu list. This contains all of the core screens that are part of the app, and we can see one of the screens here is for blog. So let's go ahead and add it into our menu. And if I scroll down here, we can see it's been added to the bottom of our menu. And coming back into our device preview, we can see that our blog menu is added here as well. I'm going to move this up into the community section. And I can click in here to change this icon if I want to. I'm happy with this default blog icon, but I'll change the color so that it matches our color scheme. I'll just make it orange and I'll click use this icon. So that looks nice. And then let's click on update. Now that we have our blog menu added, out of the box when we go into the app, all of your blog posts are going to automatically appear on the blog screen. So we're done at this point in terms of allowing blog posts to display in the app. However, there are some things you should be aware of in terms of the actual content within the blog posts to make sure that everything looks as nice as possible. So let's go into posts. And from here we can create a blog post. I'll give it a title, sample, blog post and let's add a featured image i'll use this one and this image is going to display really nicely in the app showing at the top of the blog post and now let's add some content the most important thing to understand about native app content is that the absolute best experience will be if you are using gutenberg blocks to format your content so i'm going to use this Gutenberg paragraph block. I'll say, this is my blog post. Behind the scenes, WordPress is using APIs to render this block preview. We are able to take advantage of this and use these APIs to pull this block content into the app to display it natively. If I click here to add another block, we can see that some blocks have this mobile app icon. This means that these blocks are officially supported in the app through our APIs. These will all display using React Native, and for most of these blocks, they will be able to take advantage of API caching to speed up performance on subsequent visits in the app. I explain how to configure API caching for blog posts and for other areas of the app in another tutorial, so make sure to check out that tutorial if you're interested. We're already supporting most of the default WordPress blocks, and as time goes on, we will continue to support more and more. If a block does not contain the mobile app icon, that does not mean it cannot be used in the app at all. You can still use unsupported blocks if you really need to and we provide a couple of fallback options for this scenario. Let's purposely add some unsupported blocks. I'll add the learn dash course list, and then I'll add one more. I'll add the WooCommerce products list. If you're using any unsupported blocks in the editor, like these ones, then all of the content in the editor will stop using APIs, and instead, all of the editor content will load within a single web view, similar to an iframe. The experience for this content will be similar to the mobile version of your website, but limited to just this editor content loaded within the native interface of the app. The main downside of this is that your content will load a bit slower as it cannot use our caching system, and it will be using your website styles as it will be loaded as a web view. So to summarize, you can either mix unsupported and supported blocks together, or just use unsupported blocks to all be displayed within a web view inside of the blog post. Or alternatively, you can use only our supported blocks to get the native experience. So if possible, the best app experience will be if you limit the content to our supported blocks only. If you really need to use unsupported blocks, there is a second fallback option as well. 
You may have noticed this app editor button, which is now showing this red alert on it. You are using blocks that are not supported in BuddyBoss app. Your app will use web fallbacks when unsupported blocks are present. You can remove the unsupported blocks or use the app editor to add alternate content for the app. This alert is warning us that we are using unsupported blocks and so we should consider using the app editor pop-up to set different content for the app than for the web. So let's click to open the app editor. Any content added into here will be used only in the app. If I click here to add a block, you can see that within this app editor, we can only select from supported blocks. Any content added into here will be used only in the app and will be displayed natively. We can click here to change the preview mode. By default, it will preview in the mobile layout, since of course this content is designed for the app interface. To make it faster for you, you can click on this import button to get started. This will import all app supported blocks from the main editor. The imported content will be appended to any existing content in the app editor. Are you sure you want to import content? I'll click OK. And we can see that it has imported the content from our supported blocks only. And then we can click on Update. And let's come back to our posts index for a moment. And here's the new blog post that we just created. We can see this app editor label. This tells us that the content from this blog post has been overwritten for the app using the app editor. And I can click on use app editor to jump right back into the app editor. And if I delete everything from here, the app will immediately switch back to using the web fallback for this content since we are using unsupported blocks. And if we were to remove the unsupported blocks, then the app will use our supported blocks and display them using React Native with APIs and API caching. Let's click Update. Now let's go check out this blog post in our app. First, we will hard quit the app. And now let's navigate into our blog. Here is the blog menu that we set up earlier. And here is the index of all of our blog posts. We can sort our posts by category and we can also sort posts by the date they were published. And let me show you the sample blog post that we just created. So you can see how unsupported blocks look in the app. Because it is using unsupported blocks, this content is loading as a web fallback. It works the same way as an iframe works on the web. Toward the bottom of the content, you will see this read more link, which you can tap to view all of the content within a modal. We can't really predict in advance how tall this content's going to be because it's loading within an iframe. So the only way we can ensure that all of the content will always remain visible is to allow for this infinite scrolling within the modal. In here, I can scroll through our Learn Dash course content, and down here, I get into our WooCommerce products block, and you can see that the scrolling experience is really nice within the modal. To support infinite scrolling of a web view within the post itself, this content area would need to have independent scrolling from the header and it would create a really strange experience. By using a modal, we can be certain that all of the content will always be visible. You may notice that the formatting for this content is coming from our WordPress theme. In this particular case, it is coming from BuddyBoss theme. This happens because the content is loading as a web view within this modal. You could always change the colors in your theme options to match your app for scenarios like this. But if your website will have a different color scheme from your app, we have a solution for that as well. For developers, note that we are injecting a special CSS class into the body element of your website, but only when the website is loading as a web fallback within your app. So you can easily target the body class to edit all of the web styles just when it's loaded within the app if you want to do that. We have developer documentation explaining how to do this, so make sure to check out that documentation if you're interested. Another thing to note is that web content can still take advantage of deep linking, allowing web links to redirect you to native app content if it exists. So for example, I'll tap on this course from our Learn Dash course list. And we can see that it redirected us into the actual course in the app. And to leave a comment, you can still use our native comment system. All right, now let's go back and we can scroll through some blog posts. Let's tap on this one. And here we are reminded how native supported blocks render. If we use only supported blocks in the main editor or in the app editor, it will work just like this. 
When possible, we recommend using native blocks, and then everything will just work beautifully out of the box. We know that a lot of you are producing blog posts in your websites, and it's important to you to have this content in your app. So we wanted to make sure to provide the most beautiful, fastest, and native feeling blog experience in our app possible.